Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Ankara in Turkey. First of all, the angle's a little more tilted than usual. I'm at a weird angle, so my apologies if that bothers you. Uh, no one's ever complained, but it bothers me, so I have to say something. But yeah. Ankara, as you can see, is kind of sort of in the middle of Anatolia within Turkey. To the north, we have the Black Sea coastline you can barely see up there, but this beautiful mountainous forested region bleeds into the northern part of Ankara province just a bit up here. And then to the south, we get a little bit of the more drier uh, plains of Cappadocia, bleeding it just a little bit into the south. And in the middle is kind of a mishmash of those two regions both meeting together. But by far the most important aspect of Ankara province is that it is the home to the city of Ankara, which is the capital of Turkey. Believe it or not, it is not Istanbul. Istanbul is the largest city. Ankara is the capital. A very big, bustling, modern city. In fact, the second largest city after Istanbul. And I'm going to show you all kinds of cool sites in this city uh, after I go over its history. And I'll show you on Google Earth. But I'm actually going to dive right into history. Because we are starting off with the Phrygian people. The Phrygians would have been in this area around 1000 BCE, and they would have established their capital at Gordium. I think it says it right there. Let me say sorry for my squeaky chair. Yeah, that's it right there. Gordion is right there. And actually, UNESCO made the Gordian archaeological site a World Heritage Site just a few months ago, me recording this. So I'm going to pull up their website so I can read to you more about Gordian. I'm zoomed in quite a bit because it's a little bit of an awkward angle. You don't notice, but I do. It bothers me. I move that out the way too. Located in an open rural landscape. The archaeological site of Gordion is a multi-layered ancient settlement, encompassing the remains of the ancient capital of Phrygia, an Iron Age independent kingdom. The key elements of this archaeological site include the citadel mound, the lower town, the outer town and fortifications, and several burial mounds and tumuli with their surrounding landscape. Archaeological excavations and research have revealed a wealth of remains that document construction techniques, spatial arrangements, defensive structures, and inhumation practices that shed light on Phrygian culture and economy. I'll show you the cool pictures we have here, some of the amazing artifacts in the site, and some neat little leftovers. That's what it looks like from above. But I'll show you some more cool stuff on Google Earth about Gordion after we talk more about the history of Ankara as well. Gordion has some interesting claims to fame. First of all, it was where King Midas ruled. And yes, that King Midas. There are many Greek mythical stories about King Midas. I think everyone knows the story of the Golden Touch. But King Midas was a real person, and this is where he was king. How interesting is that? I think his tomb you can find there. Also, this is where the bronze standards have been found. Well, kind of hard to describe. Really interesting bronze-looking knot configurations. They're in the big museum up here in Ankara. I'll show you because they are the symbol of the city. It's, there's a big statue of one of them in Ankara as well. But yeah, I'll show you on Google Earth. 
Also interesting about Gordian is the story of the Gordian Knot. So I believe it was King Midas who set up an ox cart in the middle of the city with a big knot attached to it, a big old messy knot of rope. And he said that whoever could untie this knot would be like the king of the world, right? I think he just meant like the, the region, you know, but um, it was very like Sword in the Stone King Arthur, you know, whoever can manage this impossible task is going to be the, the true powerful king. So, after the Phrygians had their heyday, the Lydians would come in, and those would be absorbed later by the Persians. And, of course, the Persians would later be absorbed by Alexander the Great. So, as he came conquering to control all of Persia, he wound up in Gordion and heard the story of the Gordion Knot. And when he went to go and tie it, he took out his sword and just slashed it. And he became the the King Arthur Sword and the Stone Hero. The the king who untied the Gordian knot because he just cut it with his sword. Oh Alexander never change. <laughs> but Alexander came through, conquered the Persian Empire, and passed away not long after. And this area came under a more Greek influence because of him. What's really interesting is that in the year 278 BCE, a Celtic tribe came through and conquered the region, and they were known as the Galatians. And I was like, I've heard that before. That's a book in the Bible. I've never read the Bible. I don't know much about it, but I was like, I know that name. So yes, the Galatians came through, and in 25 BCE, the Romans came through too take over the area. Now, at the time, the Romans weren't um, very tolerant of Christians. Obviously not at the time, because it was 25 BCE. Later down the road, um, once Christianity became a thing, the Romans weren't very tolerant of that. So once Christianity started to bloom in the area here, it was called Angora, or Angora at the time, which is Greek for anchor. Uh, the Romans came in to suppress them and, you know, pulled out their, like, the most important Christian thinker of the time, executed him in the public to be like, there, you see, don't be Christian or else this will happen to you. And of course, that's like the worst things to do to Christians at that time because they were like, cool, he's a martyr now. We worship him even harder. So... The Romans kind of gave up and just let the Christians do their thing in their region, and it became a big center of Christian theology and Christian scholars and all of that, which I think is really interesting. Of course, eventually the, the Romans, uh, once it became more the Byzantines, were much more accepting of Christianity because they all became Christian. So it became even more of a center of Christian learning during the height of the Byzantine era. The Goths and later the Arabs would come in and take over. The Byzantines would um, eventually snatch it back, but not for long because the Arabs would come back in full force in the year 654. And in the year 1073, the Seljuk Turks would come by and take it from them. In the year 1101, during the Crusades, the Crusaders came in and took it and gave it back to the Byzantines. But it would be recaptured by the Seljuks in 1143. Lots of back and forth. This is the big cliff notes, but wait, I'm not done yet. Because the Mongols would conquer the region in 1243. In 1356, the Ottomans would come in and take control of the region. And in 1402, Timur, or Tamerlane, of the Mongols would come through himself and wage war against the Ottomans and win and take over Ankara in 1402. But Timur's empire was extremely vast, so once he... Um, headed out to go home, the Ottomans just came and took it back 
in 1403 and it remained in Ottoman hands for a long time after that no more people coming in and conquering not until the 1920s would anything shake up but this center which was once this great place of learning and culture would become much less relevant to the Ottomans and uh, would dwindle down to mostly just like a little farming community for most of the Ottoman period. It wouldn't start growing up until the 1920s. And that is because in 1920, exactly, uh, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk would declare Ankara to be the headquarters of the resistance movement against the uh, foreign powers that were trying to carve up Turkey, no pun intended. Um, it was after World War I, the Ottoman Empire was no more, the lands were divided up between Britain, uh, France, Greece, etc. And Mustafa Kemal, who's now known as Ataturk, father of Turkey, uh, said, no, this land belongs to the Turks. And so he started to plan his resistance in Ankara. And because of that, he declared Ankara to be the capital of independent Turkey on October 13th, 1923. And it's the place where he declared Turkish independence in the first place. So think like, um, you know, in America, we have Independence Hall in Philadelphia. This would be the Turkish equivalent in Ankara. So, of course, once it became the capital of independent Turkey, the city absolutely blossomed in terms of economy, housing, modernization, all of those things. And is the big, bustling, beautiful city of Ankara today. So, let me go grab the tablet so I can show you this incredible city looks like. Let me open oh, still on Cordion. Hold on. Pull up Google Earth. There we go. Uh, it refreshed. One second. <laughs> Why would you do this to me while I'm filming? There we go. Let's pull up the boundaries of the province so you can see what it looks like from above. And let me zoom out so you can see exactly where we are in the world. So, here you can see there's Turkey. This region is known as Anatolia. And you have the Black Sea and the Mediterranean down there. We've got Europe, we've got Eurasia, we've got um, the Arabian Desert down there, so on and so forth. And here is Ankar province. Um, pretty large compared to some of the other provinces of Turkey. But here you can really see as I was talking about the beautiful, lush, Black Sea coastal landscape, just kind of peeking into the territory there. You can see the beautiful trees. There's a couple of neat sites to look at up here. I encourage you to explore it on your own. Um, you see the beautiful trees, and then you can see the more rugged Cappadocia landscape down here, including lots of little uh, reservoirs. Here is Ankara. So, alright. So it's trying to tell me Ankara is down here, and I'm looking, looking, like, where is it? It's up here. <laughs> Here's the big city center. So we have to start at the mausoleum of Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, the greatest hero of Turkish history. And they've built this gorgeous mausoleum for him. And actually, this looks like his tomb right here, but it's actually below ground here. You can see it on like a CCTV. But that's a place for people to gather to mourn him and celebrate him. There's one of his cars. There's the tomb area, and there's lots of important guards there, of course, protecting the tomb of the father of the Turks. There's also a museum attached where you can learn about his life and see cool dioramas and artwork and like see his car and stuff. This is so neat. The flowers there making the Turkish flag, another diorama of the war. 
There he is looking very impressive on his horse. Of course, Ankara is full of statues of him. Most of Turkey is full of statues of Ataturk, but um, Ankara in particular is the most. Look at this guard being very official. Very important job. Kind of reminds me of like the, the guards at Buckingham. Let's see. There's also... I have to remember. I was playing on this last night, so I have to remember my way around Ankara. Um, I can show you. Let's find the museums. Let's see. I'm at a weird angle, so I'm going to lean over here. Uh, here's the museums. Let me find the one I wanted to show you. All in Turkish, not the chess museum, although that is interesting. Here it is Museum of Anatolian Civilizations. So here's where we can see some amazing artifacts from all across Anatolia. Um, look at this, looks like almost like armor of some kind. That's neat. Some carvings there, pottery. This is the standards, the bronze standards of Gordion. So we're not quite sure what these were for, but they're very intricate and very beautiful. And they're the symbol of the city of Ankara today. Very cool, right? Oh, this guy's having a bad day. <laughs> he got chopped up enough. This guy's looking great. Beautiful statues there. There's another standard there. These cool bulls. How neat. This may be a deer, right? Big old antlers there. Happy face. So yeah, lots of neat artifacts. Some stuff from Chetalhuyuk. There's some more uh, diagrams there showing you how people used to live. Then up here, we have the hammam here. The Roman baths. If I can tap it. There we go. The leftovers of this Roman civilization. Sorry, I have Tourette's if you don't know. I'm trying not to wiggle too much. Um, but how cool is this? Look, there's some neat little tombs here as well. It looks like little remnants of columns, maybe. Statues. And look at this. Tomb is in Hebrew. So that really tells you about the time period we are in, isn't it? Very, very fascinating. Oops. Sorry, rock. And look at these jars. My goodness, the Cambodian field of jars eat your heart out. <laughs> Those are some huge jars. Some cool lions. This looks like the kind of the grave area, right? Or at least where things have been found and have been lined up so that we can enjoy them today. Maybe that's what these big jars are for. I wonder what those were for massive. Maybe something to do with the bath. And see, here's a cool cross, right? Almost looks like a crusader cross, but probably a little too early for that. I don't think there are any crusaders buried here. But, yeah, very, very neat, I think. There are so many museums over here. I was looking through them all. I just really wanted to show you that. Um, the archaeology museum, but highly encourage you to check other thing I wanted to show you here, but I can't remember what it is. What's this museum? Oh, the prison museum? Yeah, that one's interesting, but a little sad. What was the other thing I wanted to show you? I can't remember. Oh, it was the mosque. I gotta find that. Whoa, there's a dinosaur museum there. I didn't see that before. I'm going to show you the big mosque. And it is over here. This mosque is gorgeous. Kochitepe Mosque. It's like dominating the skyline of Ankara. If you see any pictures of the city, you can't miss it. It's where you wash up before you pray. How beautiful is that? This slideshow actually doesn't really do it justice. I want to show you. Um, let's see. The inside here. Let's go 
go inside the prayer hall. Look how beautiful. Look at this detail. Look at this chandelier. So incredible. I bet at night this place is just dazzling like diamonds. And I think over here is the corner that faces Mecca, pretty sure. You can see people facing it, but I think that's it. But absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I can't get over the details in this place. So, so, so lovely. You know, the Ottomans weren't perfect people, but they did know how to build a mosque, right? They were good at that. That's what I wanted to show you. Let's close this out by looking over at Gordion. That's another place that's kind of hard to find on Google Earth. So I have it queued up here to show you. Let's look at the ancient town of Midas. You can see what it looks like from above. And look, it's got some cool tunnels. of sites like this. If it'll load. Come on. There we go. Oop, oop, there we go. Little chart telling you where to go look so you can explore this ancient city. Gordion. There's a big mound there. It looks like you can go inside and explore. I think that's the big tomb. So much history here for thousands of years. Oh, there's human bones. I meant to warn you guys. I forgot. Uh, but yeah, it's, if these walls could talk, yeah, the Midas Tumulus, where Midas's tomb is. Ancient um, mosaic flooring. These beautiful walls here. Some of the pottery that's been found. Absolutely. So much history. This is where it all began, right here. So, I tried to look around to show you other places in the province. There's some neat statues and things here and there, but again, I encourage you to look around yourself, especially over in Ankur, because there's so many cool sights to see there. Uh, but I'm going to end it there. So, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It's an ongoing series on my channel. Next, we're going to be heading over to Algeria. We're going to spend a couple of days in Africa. And this place in Algeria, I've never heard of it. I bet you've never heard of it. But it has an incredibly long and interesting history, so you don't want to miss it. So be sure to subscribe, okay? hoping that you found this video relaxing and educational. 